Forty years ago, Basanho turned his back on traditional herding for a better life in the city. He got an education and sent his children to school. But they all still live on the outskirts. No running water, no sewage system, no central heating. It's overcrowded and the city is developing rapidly, so soil, air and water pollution are a big concern for us. Some 700,000 people, more than half of Ulaanbaatar's population, live like this. Many of them arriving recently from the rural areas hoping to benefit from a boom in the economy. But all they could afford once here was to set up their homes in informal settlements like this one, called Gare Districts, after the traditional nomadic tents. The government can't force them out. By law, each Mongolian citizen has a right to claim unused land. And if uncontested, they can own close to 700 square meters. That's about 35 times the size of a normal gear. The city wasn't prepared for the 1.3 million people that now live here. And its planners say it can't continue to expand unregulated and chaotic. Private developers have been invited by the government to build free apartments for gay residents in exchange for their land. We live in the 21st century and the, uh, everybody have a right to live and work in a, a nice proper places. And we just want to give that poss possibility to the uh, girl to others. There were fears that people would resist, but the response so far has been good. Living in a high-rise building is ideal for Mongolian people. Mongolians love to see vastness outside of tall apartments rather than being confined behind fences. The plans for redevelopment mean this Gare District school will not stand for long. But the once nomadic elders say the children won't necessarily be turning their back on tradition because they'll be taught the most important nomadic lesson of all how to adapt to survive. Margot Ortigas, Al Jazeera, Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia.